Okay. So after that first lecture, the introductory one, in which we emphasized that uh, physics is done through certain tools, some of which I will be talking to you about. Uh, the one thing, the approach that I will have today, which occurs in all branches uh, of physics, which we teach at uh, the high school level, also at the post high school, that is intermediate level, class 11th and class 12th. Mm -hmm. So I will introduce you to the subject with talk about the systems approach. In the systems approach, whatever we want to learn, we want to learn, this is a system. And uh, this system is isolated isolated yani hum isko system ko isolated system kehte hain jiske hum andar kuch cheeze hoti hain there are things which happen and we can say that the system could have a variable say w which is a function of say many variables x, y, z, t, etc. Any of these, now there are variables. In the simplest format, we can define the system as comprising of two uh, variables, say x, and y. The two variables. And in such a way that say I can say that y is a function of x. What it means that y depends on x as also I can say that x is a function of y. Because if x changes y does and y changes x does. This is a very simple system. And to make it more simple, we can say the simplest of the things is that you know that y is proportional to x. Yani, we can say that y is proportional to proportional to x or similarly I can say x is proportional to y they have the dependency one depends on the other <coughs> And this is the simplest of things which we discuss in proportionality. <clears throat> now, this symbol, just like alpha, is called is proportional to. Since you know things, then you will say that uh, this is a symbol of uh, direct proportionality. Direct proportionality. Y is directly proportional to directly proportional null to x or x is directly proportional to y. 
y is directly proportional to x or say x is directly proportional to y. <coughs> Here I would like to make a certain uh, revelation to you because <coughs> we have uh, historically another term inversely proportional to. There is nothing like inverse proportionality. It's only a way of understanding things. For example, <coughs> those who understand that y is inversely proportional to x. Right? <coughs> we should better call it y is directly proportional to 1 upon x or y is proportional to x to the power of minus 1 because x to the power minus 1 or say x to the power of minus 5 is equal to 1 upon x to the power of 5. I hope you understand that. Now, if so, if y is proportional to x, then we say that y is equal to kx. Where x and y, they are variables and k is a constant of the system. k is the constant, the constant. of the defined system defined system our system is okay k is the constant of the defined system so k is the constant of the defined system. <clears throat> what is the system? System has been defined as an isolated system with only two variables x and y which are defined later by y is proportional to x and k is the constant of the the constant. I emphasize the constant. Okay. So in Arabic we call it al tabit the constant of the defined system. <clears throat> it's important for the defined system. Now, I can say that if so, y is equal to kx, where x and y are variables, but k is constant. So I can say that, that, that mathematically I can write that this k is equal to y upon x. So if the value of x is x1, then this becomes corresponding value is y1. So this is y2 upon x2 etc. y n upon x n. So that means these are the variables y and x are the variables but k is the constant of the system. Okay. So I can say that <coughs> 
the constraint of the system. For example, I'll give you an illustration. An illustration, an example is that I have this pen. This pen costs me 20 rupees. So if you go and buy five pens, you must have 100 rupees. And 10 pens means 200 rupees. So it is the, you can say the system is the money that I have and the number of pens that I have. One of them is X, the other is Y. So K is a constant of the system in the sense that if I ask what is the rate of a pen that will turn out to be K. 20 rupees per pen. Now I would like to it's easy I can draw a graph y and x. These are the two variables with the units etc. that will be there. So I can say that y is a function of x and y is proportional to x and y is equal to a constant times x. And if I draw a graph between y and x, the graph may look like this, depending upon the value of k, here the value of k is, uh, is smaller than for a parallel system, for example, if I go for a duster, then a duster may cost me rupees 30, two of them will cost rupees 60, five of them 150, etc., etc. Now, <coughs> this uh, graph appears to me here, the constant is say k duster. And this is k pen. So you find that the slope here in the second case is more than the slope in the first case. For example, for the same value of x, I can say that the values of y appear to be different. So this is what it means. <coughs> that k is the constant of the system, k defines the system. So I can write again, if I have uh, y is equal to kx and then if I change x to another value, x goes to x plus delta x. Delta is a small change. That could be negative, that could be positive, that could be zero. So y goes to, y accordingly goes to y plus delta y and then if I substitute these values I can write from here that y plus delta y is equal to k times x plus delta x. If I just write this equation to be equation number 1 and this one is equation number 2, which I can write as here kx 
प्लस के डेल्टा एक्स एंड इफ आई सब्ट्रैक्ट इक्वेशन वन ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड आल्सो ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड फ्रॉम इक्वेशन टू then y is cancelled with y and kx is cancelled with kx and i get delta y delta y is equal to k delta x and then i can obtain from here i can obtain that k is equal to delta y which is a change in the value of y divided by delta x which is a change in the value of x so k i can say it is the rate of change of y with respect to x so definitely in another plot what i can do is that i can again draw now this time a single Uh, graph like this and this is the first value and this is the second value where the value of x is increasing how much the value of x is increasing here and this is delta x which is equal to x plus delta x minus x and the here this is delta y which is equal to y plus delta y minus y so basically i can say that delta y upon delta x this is a right angle triangle and so we define k here as delta y upon delta x now i am not going into the details but if if delta x tends to zero or it is very small delta x tends to zero here is the foundation is very very simple thing that k is equal to delta y upon delta x which is nothing but in the limit in the limit i mean under the condition that delta x tends to zero delta y upon delta x and this we write in a symbolic form as dy upon dx which is the derivative of y with respect to x so naturally this is what i can say again that this is d dx of y is the derivative of y with respect to x or in simple language it is the rate of change of y with respect to x now after introducing this in the next lecture i will uh, continue talking about it giving you some examples and uh, for example i'll show to you that in the system of circles an arc is proportional to the radius an arc is equal to some constant times radius and this constant is nothing but the angle i'll define the angle i'll define the pi etc etc and it's a very interesting thing to understand and then work on it so for today i will just give you the gist of what i have done i have introduced 
introduce you an isolated system. Now I want to make a comment that in physics we don't look into things with all their complexities. But what we do is we take a very simple system and then try to understand how things change, how uh, the derivatives are obtained, what is the meaning of this derivative. In the next lecture I may even tell you how the integration is obtained with a simple example. This as you can see these three lines they are appear to be continuous but actually they are made of certain points close together if the delta x is reduced then this becomes a continuous curve the curve is not discrete it is discrete but it appears to be continuous <coughs> also these systems that we have talked about so far is a linear system i'll talk to you about linear and nonlinear systems and how so be prepared for linear and nonlinear systems because many physical relationships they are based like that and if you know that it will be very easy for you to do the physics all by yourself thank you for now